Hey everyone, so today we're in a little bit of a different location. I'm gonna bring you guys three different weeknight meals that I think you will love. They're ones that we really love in our household. They're pretty easy. A lot of the ingredients you most likely have in your house, or if you don't, there might be something you can substitute that you might have. I'm calling these weeknight meals. I know for us, a lot of the days are kind of running together right now, but just generally, these are easier meals to make. So tonight's meal, I'm gonna be making sesame beef tacos. Basically, these are just tacos, but it's my favorite way to make the meat no taco seasoning it's something different and it tastes completely different and i'm telling you these are like the most delicious tacos you will ever have they're sweet they're savory they're so good i'm literally sitting here editing this video and just hearing me describe the taco meat my mouth is watering all over again days later i want tacos again this video is not sponsored by anyone or anything like that but I'm actually taking a HelloFresh recipe and I've kind of made it my own. I think all of the three recipes I'll be making this week are ones that I don't necessarily have a link for, so I'll try to type a simplified version of each recipe down in the description box if you wanna copy, paste, print it, whatever you need to do. So let's get cooking because I am already hungry. I'm drinking some evening coffee because I just needed it today. <laughs> anyway, this is the original recipe, like I said. The HelloFresh has nothing to do with this video. What I do is I take the instructions they give for the meat and like I don't have cabbage and we pretty much never have cabbage on hand so that's something I'll leave out but I do a lot of the other steps that they mentioned so for us like for taco toppings and that's something I'm going to prep now because I'm not quite ready to actually cook it we have some tomatoes I'm going to dice up uh, actually I cut them because they were starting to go bad and now I'm just going to dice them up and it'll be perfect um we don't have like heads of lettuce I don't really care for iceberg lettuce if you did that'd be great on this though i usually like to cut up an onion to be able to throw on these if you want them i am very partial to red onions so i think that's what i'm going to cut up and typically if i'm going to dice up an onion we're probably only going to use like half of it i'll go ahead and dice the entire thing and then just save it in the fridge because i feel like diced onions are good on so many different things and then it's already cut so we are going to be using these corn tortillas and then certainly we will be using some shredded cheese sour cream is absolutely a must for us hot sauce for my husband he always puts I don't really know for Mexican food, like tacos, what he usually uses, Cholula. Um, there's actually gonna be some sriracha in the meat. Another thing we just happen to have, but we don't typically have, is scallions or green onions. I have been telling Tyler lately, I've been using it in a lot of cooking this week, just because we had them. And I'm like, they really do add a lot of flavor to a lot of dishes. So it's just something I'm like, maybe I should have this on hand more, but we're gonna go ahead and use those. They're not gonna make or break the dish. So if you don't have scallions, it's really not that big of a deal. Obviously ground beef is what I'll be using for this. I have made it with ground pork as well. And it was pretty good. I just think it's better with ground beef. Now for the meat, you are gonna need some kind of hot sauce, typically sriracha, soy sauce, and then I'm gonna skip this and come back to that. Sugar, this, I don't even remember what, this is like cane sugar, but just sugar. Granulated plain white sugar is fine. Garlic powder, salt and pepper. Now, another thing that it calls for that I do think makes it taste really good is sesame oil. Obviously, most people don't just have this. I sure didn't until I started making this recipe. So if you have it, great. This oil definitely does have a really nice flavor. So if you end up liking this, it would probably be worth buying if you know you'd make tacos like this more often than not. Are you having a lazy day? Are you liking a fire? I did some prepping earlier. Actually, Tyler cut the onions because he's just faster than me. <laughs> I was doing other stuff. But I've got the tomatoes diced up. I've got some scallions or green onions ready to go. It is now literally like 8.30. We ended up going on a walk outside. We needed some fresh air. And then we were dilly-dallying and playing with Gigi. So Tyler is laying her down. She's already had some dinner herself. And I'm going to make dinner really quickly. It really is fast, even though this is like a super late dinner. I want to say that this is rare for us, but honestly, we eat late so often anymore. It's incredibly bizarre. Anyway, let's get to cooking. We are turning on kind of medium high. I've got some olive oil. I'm just going to heat it up, and then I'm going to throw the scallion whites and some of the greens in the olive oil. I love cooking with green onions. Also, I was like last year days old when I found out that scallions and green onions were the same thing. So we'll kind of cook these for two or three minutes. All right, now we are adding the ground beef. One of my favorite tools is this little mix and chop. Oh my gosh. So I'm taking the garlic powder and doing two teaspoons of this. And then I'm also doing two teaspoons of sugar. I'm telling you, the sugar, the garlic, 
is a big part of what absolutely makes this dish. I'm going to continue adding sugar to taste throughout this entire process. So we're just going to kind of mix this up and brown the meat. Probably take six or seven minutes. Sorry, if you hear music, Tyler is playing piano, my husband. So it's just about browned. I'm adding two tablespoons of the sesame oil. This really does make it taste delicious, but if you don't have it, it's still going to be a really good taco meat. But I would say if you don't have sesame oil, you don't need to add more oil to this since there's already the grease from the meat. You know what I mean? For sriracha, I would say add like two to three teaspoons. I don't usually measure. I just kind of do a little of this and that's that. And of course you could substitute in a different hot sauce if you want. You could leave it out if you want. I don't think it completely makes or breaks the taste, but it does. I don't really even like spicy foods and the taste of it is just so good. If you do want a little bit of spice, you can add in some crushed red pepper. I really don't add in much. I'm not a big spice person if I'm being honest with you. Soy sauce two tablespoons. This you definitely want to have for this. It's a big part of the flavor. Then salt, as much as you want, pepper, and then I'm going to add some more sugar just because I, I really think the sweetness is what makes it. So I'm adding probably a tablespoon or two more sugar to it. That's it for the meat. Meat is done. So another thing I completely forgot to add is sesame seeds. If you have them, sprinkle them on top of the meat mixture at the end. If you don't, again, it doesn't make or break it, but it's perfect for this recipe and I just completely spaced it. So I just wet a paper towel. We are in the home stretch cooking the meat. Tyler, how long would you say it took me? 10 minutes. Yeah, maybe. max. It really is not bad. So I'm gonna heat these up. We already have toppings for it. Four by six. How many do you want? At least four. four. <laughs> Honestly, I might want four too. How many do you have? Left I like to there? think I'm just gonna have three, just but two I'm probably gonna There's have like four. two left. Okay. So then I just kind of wrap them in this, microwave them for 30 seconds or so, and we're good to go. So we've got our little toppings bar. Another thing I love on tacos is sliced black olives but I don't know that we have any right now. Oh my gosh, these are so yummy. The worst part about corn tortillas though is they will fall apart the second you start eating them, but I love the taste of them so much. It's already breaking. Ah, <laughs> look at it. Okay. That meat is so sweet and savory. Mm -hmm. It's the perfect meat. It's the taco meat I didn't know I was missing. I like classic taco meat, don't you? Like taco seasoning yeah, like from Costco seasoning. Yeah, or yeah. like the just normal. Delicious. This is, there's just such a twist to this that it, it's just like blown my mind. And I, I haven't made regular taco meat in like a year. Yeah, it's true. Wouldn't you say like, yeah. I've just switched over to this dark side. <laughs> so delicious night ones meals, super easy. I mean, tacos across the board are just super easy, but I think this twist on it, you will enjoy, even if you don't have all of the ingredients. Okay, night two, I've got a toddler running around the house. <laughs> We're gonna make a quick dinner again. So tonight's recipe, I'm using probably my favorite cookbook, the Skillet Meals Cookbook. You can buy it on Amazon, a couple other places. We use it all of the time. So today's meal is this stovetop chicken macaroni and cheese. Most of this stuff you most likely have in your kitchen somewhere. However, there are a few specific things they ask for that I don't think you have to have. And I have a paper cut on my thumb and it's making me crazy. Tonight, we are having some white wine. I have a straw because I have Invisalign. Don't make fun of me. All right, so here's our recipe. It calls for some pasta. This is specifically macaroni. Obviously, you could use whatever you have. Now, this is where I make mine even easier. It calls for chicken breasts um, that you cut into pieces. I just buy the frozen kind in a bunch of little chunks that are like pre-cooked, so you literally just heat them in the stove. It's so easy. So we need to chop some onions up. It calls for milk, flour, some shredded cheddar cheese, which I have. I'm assuming most of us do not have semi-soft cheese with garlic and herbs at home. I actually was able to procure some, but most nights when I made this, I don't have it. But you absolutely do need some kind of cheese. So the shredded cheddar cheese, I usually would just add more of it. And then some fresh baby spinach. I have some mixed greens I'm gonna use and then cherry tomatoes if you have them. By the way, this is what I meant. This Tyson grilled and ready, like these diced, chicken breasts. These are more expensive than regular chicken breasts, but I'm telling you, they're already cooked, so all you have to do is heat them. It makes cooking with chicken so easy. We always, always, always have this on hand. And I feel like you can always find a coupon for that, so that's something to keep in mind. I always get like a dollar off with the coupon. So I think we have everything we need here. I've got my pasta. I actually just had to buy some 
fresh macaroni pasta because we used all of ours up. And then this spring mix is already looking a little worse for wear. So even though it's not technically spinach, we're going to do it anyway <laughs> because we clearly have not been eating salads as much as we uh, thought we would. <laughs> I know you're surprised. And actually these cherry tomatoes are looking a little worse for wear too. So it'll be good to use a bunch of these up. This is the soft cheese I've bought the few times I've made this with it. But like I said, a lot of times I just use extra cheddar cheese and it's just fine. And then actually I don't have fat-free milk. So we're going to use 2%. And that'll be that. This pan right here, I will link below. I think I can find the same one. I don't remember if I could find the exact one or not, but it's from the brand Anilon. It's nonstick and I literally, because it's so deep and wide, wider than like normal pans like this, I use it almost every night for dinner. So I'm gonna chop up the onions. I was gonna just dice them. Honestly, I don't really like dicing onions. And so I finally bought one of these OXO like food choppers best money I've ever spent. So you can literally, like I took off the outer layers obviously and I just cut these. These are like baby onions. We got like a bag of them and they're the smallest onions I've ever seen. But you literally just, and that's that. I know, I hope you guys have your jaw like on the ground right now. I feel like this is one of those recipes that's perfect to use up older cherry tomatoes. Like these are all like, ugh. like they're fine. I've taste tested, I've cleaned them, but they're definitely like on their last legs. So I always throw some olive oil in and then we're gonna put the chicken chunks and the onions in here. But if you were using a real chicken breast, it says to, you know, obviously it should be defrosted, cut it up into the chunks and then put it in here. Ours is gonna go by quicker because ours are technically already cooked. Oh, and I'm also using way more than a fourth a cup of onions because I love onions and so does my husband. And we're just gonna kind of eyeball how much we want in here, honestly. So I like to call this dish grown up mac and cheese because I, that's kind of what I feel like it is, you know? And you really can add more things to it if you wanted to. You could remove things. It's just one of those things that you can really do a lot with if you want, like if you're a vegetarian, you don't have to put the chicken in. Hi, baby. Very busy with her fake cell phone, very busy. We are looking pretty good on this. Chaos in my household right now. So we've removed it from the heat. We're adding the soft cheese. Yeah. Yes, honey, I can't hold you right now. <laughs> All right, so with a little toddler break, we've got the water boiling. I've got the pasta in there now. And then what we need to do next is in a bowl, we're gonna whisk together some milk. It's one and two thirds a cup of milk. It's supposed to be fat free. Like I said, I only have 2%. And then a tablespoon of flour, we're gonna whisk that together. Okay, so we are going to whisk this into it. It's okay. So we have this back on the heat and we're just gonna kind of pour in the milky flour mixture. Again, I don't really measure the cheese. You just kind of gradually add it once this has like boiled and thickened. So that sounded gross, boiled and thickened. I don't know why. Heather, why does that sound gross? <laughs> anyway, so you just kind of gradually add cheese as it kind of melts in. Again, if you didn't have the soft cheese at the beginning, I would just add more here. So now that it is thickened, you add the cooked macaroni, which honestly was sitting for a while as we got Gigi to bed. Apparently dips the pot in the cheese. <laughs> that sounds about right. But oh my gosh, you guys, this is so good. If you can get your hands on that semi-soft cheese of any kind, it is it really does amp it up. I'm adding some pepper. I don't know if the recipe calls for it, but I just love freshly cracked pepper. And then it is actually time. This is where you'd throw the spinach in. I'm just throwing in the mixed greens we have because we are making do. Again, not really measuring. And of course, if you have a family member that doesn't like the greens, you don't have to have it in, but it certainly adds just a little bit of a grown up healthy quality to it. So then you just kind of top it with cherry tomatoes. And that is that. It's so easy, you guys. It is so good. I said, Tyler, will you film me trying this? And he said, okay, but the fire's not awesome, so don't look at that. <laughs> That's quite all right. He's been soaking it all night, though, and it's a good fire. We're trying to just burn the rest of our firewood while it's still, like, cold out. Anyway, doing like she, she does. Hot, hot. Hot, hot, <laughs> yeah, hot. hot. It's so good. It really is like grown-up mac and cheese. And I feel, like I mentioned earlier, you could add or detract things as you want, like based on what your family actually eats and likes and stuff. But it's one of those recipes you can adjust and finagle and it is just so good. Absolutely one of my favorites. 
All right, it is night three and we are making one that we discovered maybe a few years ago and it became a favorite like instantly. It is so fast, but I will say it is a little bit different. And so let me show you what it is. It is this tomatoes, greens, and chickpea skillet. So this is what it looks like in the end. I love eggs. Now, what's interesting is you basically make this chickpea mixture out of a few ingredients. It is so fast. And then you separately make the eggs. We like them over easy. But it only calls for four eggs, so like two eggs each. Uh, we make six eggs, three eggs each, because uh, we love eggs. There's no meat in this or anything, so if you're vegetarian, this would work for you. I'm telling you, we weren't even big on chickpeas. This was the dish that made us like chickpeas. So you'll need olive oil and you'll kind of put the onion and garlic in there. You'll put some curry powder in and then you'll need diced tomatoes. We actually use Rotel ones just because there's a little bit more flavor to it. And I like the mild. The regular Rotel in this is just a little bit too spicy for my taste. You can also just use regular diced tomatoes and a little bit of salt, a can of chickpeas. I've got that here. It calls for two cups of Swiss chard or spinach. Once I bought Swiss chard just for this. Absolutely does not need to be Swiss chard. So honestly, we use whatever leafy greens we have. So again, we still have this spring mix we need to use up. If you have a family that doesn't really like spinach within, just leave it out. It's not like it adds a bunch of flavor. Honestly, for us, it just adds a little bit of like health factor to it. But the nice thing is, other than the eggs, depending on how you feel about eggs, it's a pretty darn healthy dish. You just got tomatoes, chickpeas, and some spices, and then the greens if you put them in. I'm also drinking this Zevia. This is like a Dr. Pepper wannabe thing. It just has like carbonated water, Zevia leaf, and then like the flavors and some caffeine. And honestly, it's hitting the spot tonight. I'm trying to make sure I'm not like drinking wine every single night of quarantine. So something like that in the evening it makes me feel like, ooh, caffeine, but like I don't feel as bad as like drinking wine every night anyway. Total side point, nothing to do with anything. By the way, this is also in that Skillet Meals book. I'm telling you, you guys, this is my number one favorite cookbook. I cook out of this constantly. If you're gonna pick up one cookbook, even if you're not a cookbook person, this is the one. Okay, so again, we're just gonna use our little chopper and get some onions chopped. Okay, so we put olive oil in here. I threw the chopped up onions in and now we've got the minced garlic in there. So this will cook for a few minutes. Uh, I tend to burn this all the time, so turn it a little lower, especially like these onions are diced pretty fine, so they're they're gonna soften. They're already getting soft and it's only been like two minutes. Okay, so now you add a tablespoon of curry powder and cook it for about a minute. So now we're adding the Rotel tomatoes. I don't drain it or anything. We want all of that good juice. And this will cook for three minutes in the skillet. I'm gonna turn it back up to medium. So now you add the drained chickpeas. This you do want to drain and kind of rinse them. These need to cook at least three minutes. Sometimes I'll cook it a little longer. I like my chickpeas to be a little bit softer. So it kind of depends on what you like. If you've never had chickpeas before, you'll probably like them softer. So at least three minutes. Sometimes I'll do it for like five. So now we are going to add in, it says two cups of the greens. I'm just throwing in some handfuls. Like I said, this is a great way to use up greens that are starting to turn. And as this is cooking, I'll just kind of throw in, season it with salt and pepper. You can kind of do that whenever, but I usually remember it at the end. I'm gonna turn this as low as it can go just to simmer. We're gonna do the eggs. So this is the way we have learned is best to do this. We will spray the pans. You can oil it or butter, whatever you wanna do for the eggs. We use these two nonstick ones we love. We loved this first one so much, we just bought two. It's these KitchenAid ones we've had for years. We turn the burners on to pretty low, like if you've got numbers up to 10, it's like two or three. Get it kind of warmed up and we're gonna put the eggs in. We typically, again, we've got a broken yolk there, which stinks, but we'll pour them in. We'll season them with salt and pepper. And then I'm gonna actually put a lid on both of these so that it will help the heat trapped within will help cook it without completely overcooking it since we do want them over easy. Don't judge how well we wash these lids. I can feel your judgment. Honestly, this, in my opinion, is the hardest part of this, which is why I like to just get the entire skillet thing done, then do the eggs. And I'm so sad about the freaking broken yolk because the best part of this meal, in my opinion, is when you break the egg open and the yolk gets all over the chickpea mixture. That's what makes this so delicious. I'm just doing ridiculous things behind the camera. Anyway, honestly, truth be told, like if you did the eggs at the same time as the rest of it, 
15 minutes maximum. It's so fast, but for me, that was probably 20-ish minutes doing it that way. But I'm excited to eat it. Tyler, are you pumped? Oh my gosh, it's my favorite meal. One of my favorite meals of all time. You think? Definitely. What hot sauce do you usually put on it? Cholula. Okay. Cholula is the hot sauce required for this meal. Well, if you like hot sauce, I'm not a fan. Now we've got two yolks, one in each that broke. So I'm like, well, I guess that solves the problem of who gets the broken one. These probably need about one more minute. So I've got the mixture. I just split it amongst, we've got these kind of large bowls we like to use for this. We, I don't think this is very good leftover, especially with the greens in it. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. 100%. Yeah. Okay. He's testing soil over there for his garden. Don't mind him. I like the British lady in my garden. We're going to put these eggs on there. They are done. And that's pretty much that. So here they are. You can see underneath the egg. I literally just slid it off into this. Underneath there is the mixture and it is so, so good. It smells so good too. Tyler's got some sunburn on his face. I was just telling him. You have more sunblock, did you? didn't today normally i do actually have a uh, uh bottle of it outside yes the egg yolk mm. let's go let me dive in you just got to get a little bit of everything it's like making a teeny tiny salad <laughs> on the fork every time <laughs> i really think it has to be runny eggs uh, it has to be yep i think because the, yeah there's the stuff on the bottom is good but I don't think it's good just on its, it's own. It's the combination of it. It's the combination yeah. that makes the dish, which yep. is why we never have it left over because we eat too much of it, A, and B, <laughs> because it it's just not good left over. It's so good fresh, though. Like, this is something I would order at a restaurant. Oh, Can yeah. you agree? Yep, 100%. We make it, like, at least once a month. At least, yeah. There were times that we were making it, like... Once a week. And we were like, we, <laughs> we are got eating tired this of it too for much. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, deal with it. It's so good. Mm -hmm. And just something different, too. Like, totally shakes it up. Nothing like... Pretty much any of the meals we're making yeah nights, you top know? 10 for me seriously really? seriously top 10. <sighs> so thank you guys for watching this video i hope it was either enjoyable or helpful or you got maybe one meal idea out of it like i said i will have all of the recipes down below if you enjoy this kind of more vloggy style video we do do weekly vlogs over on tyler's channel who now you've met uh, which is Tyler Travels TV. And of course on my channel, I do makeup videos, declutters, lifestyle videos, Amazon favorites, things like that. So if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you join the family and subscribe. It helps you find my videos a lot more easily. And of course it is free. But if you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up. I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.